Okay, so the next thing I want to tell you guys about stroke volume is changing gears just a little bit. And please note before I go any further that this is independent of volume, okay? This is a way to increase what goes out without increasing what goes in. And this is called ventricular contractility. Okay, so listen carefully to what's going on here. So with ventricular contractility, what you are going to do is you are going to keep the volume in the ventricles constant, but then you're going to make the ventricle contract harder. This is not, not the same thing as Starling's Law. So let me show you a couple things and watch this. With Starling's Law, what happens is if you increase the EDV, the volume in the ventricles, then you get the sarcomeres to contract better. So this is changing the volume, getting a stronger contraction. But with ventricular contractility, you hold the volume constant and you impact the stroke volume out without changing the amount in. It's just by basically squeezing harder, but squeezing harder with the amount that's in there staying, um, staying st um, stable. Okay, so ventricular contractility says at a given EDV, I'm not changing it, stroke volume increases as you increase the force of ventricular contraction. And the way that you do that is with the sympathetic nervous system. Now, you have known for a while that the sympathetic nervous system increases heart rate, and it still does, and we'll get to that. But now what I wanna tell you is the sympathetic nervous system actually goes to the walls of the ventricle too, and the parasympathetic doesn't. Notice parasympathetic is in purple here, sympathetic is in green. Okay, so what happens is when sympathetic stimulation goes to the heart, not only does it increase heart rate, it also increases stroke volume. Okay, and that's really important. So the sympathetic nervous system will make the wall of the ventricle contract harder. This is ventricular contractility. So the sympathetic nervous system stimulation increases the strength of contraction, not just the rate of contraction. And this is holding the volume constant. So whatever was in there, either I could squeeze it like this, or with the sympathetic nervous system, I could go squeeze, squeeze really, really hard. Okay, so it increases the strength of contraction, not just the rate of contraction. So this guy right here that we are seeing is independent of volume that was in there. Keep the volume that's in there constant and then increasing ventricular contractility with the sympathetic nervous system, which will be over here, um, will increase the stroke volume. Okay, so and that, let's look here again. So what happens is, okay, this is not doing anything to your heart, just sitting there being a heart, okay? If you decrease sympathetic activity, the stroke volume drops without changing the volume that's in the ventricles. But if you increase sympathetic activity, making the ventricles contract harder, then you will increase the stroke volume without changing the amount that was in there. It's just the amount that you're getting out by squeezing out, squeezing harder or not as hard. So the difference between, again, Starling's law and ventricular contractility, this says, more blood into the ventricles stretches those sarcomeres, more volume stretches sarcomeres and you get a greater stroke volume. This one says keep the volume content, uh, keep the volume constant and just squish it harder because the sympathetic nervous system goes to the walls of the ventricles and that is ventricular contractility, which is independent of volume. Ventricular contractility is independent of the volume, okay? All right, so that is stroke volume. Do we get everything with stroke volume? Okay, so here's a question and then I'll stop this video. If your stroke volume falls dangerously low, okay, your stroke volume is really low, like you have bled out or you just had a heart attack, so you can't generate a lot of contractile strength, but we know that we must maintain blood flow above and beyond th all things, if your stroke volume falls low, how do you maintain blood flow? Well, you increase your heart rate. So if your stroke volume fell low because you just bled out, you would do something that initially seems counterintuitive. Oh, I've got a hole in my artery um, and my blood flow is dropping, but my heart 
really only knows two tricks and it said if the stroke volume is low, how about I increase the heart rate? Unfortunately, that is of course gonna make you bleed out more quickly, but all things serve blood flow and the heart is going to try the only tricks that it knows to maintain blood flow. Okay, we'll stop there and now we're gonna do heart rate.